Hey everyone, welcome back to Google Workspace Recap, where we review everything new to Workspace every week. My name is Jesse Nolan, my co-host is Steve Larson, and we're here to help you keep up. Happy Sukkot. That is the uh, latest of the Jewish holidays that we have this month to all of my Jewish brethren out there who are celebrating. Um, this is uh, the fun holiday with the huts outside where we eat our meals in the temporary structures, etc. Um, look it up if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's just another one of our fun holidays. I spent the day yesterday at a theme park with my kids, so um, that's why we're recording this a little bit later on uh, Tuesday morning here hopefully I have like five days of work to do today so hopefully I can get it out in uh, in one shot Steve how's it going good yeah I uh, got a little time crunch here today so we'll we'll cut to the chase and get right into the updates because we've got a decent amount this week uh, three that came out uh, end of the week recap here uh, eight more eight of the kind of normal updates we had and a few things happening in the news uh, to kind of talk about. So we'll get through all those as quick as we can. Not too quick though, uh, <laughs> but just quick enough. Um, so uh, to give you a rundown on the updates, uh, silent ones we saw improved paste values uh, experience in Google Sheets, uh, some different certificates for signing and encrypting messages in Gmail, and then also some uh, allow certificate mismatches for client side encrypted messages happening there. Uh, in terms of the, the updates that we saw during the week, uh, the first one was the ability to create modified insert email templates within groups messages. Uh, cool one there. Uh, next is some additional space manager capabilities in Google Chat. And uh, next, uh, we can easily now link to specific messages in Google Chat. So a lot of the chat stuff happening coming out this week that we saw at, uh, at Next and other uh, times throughout the year. <laughs> and you can now also easily add and remove groups of members to a space in Google Chat. Uh, talked about that one, I think, a little bit. Yep. Uh, the next phase of digital whiteboarding for Google Workspace. Uh, so as we hinted at that the other mm. week. R.I.P. Uh, uh, Called yeah. it. <laughs> we did. We did indeed. We did. And yeah, that was just like, a, had, we had no idea about that one. Uh, that was, no, no advance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Jamboard. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, next, we have some updates regarding the transition from spaces organized by topic to inline threading in Google Chat. Some client-side encryption in Gmail is now available on mobile devices. And then finally, uh, to round things out there for the updates, uh, we have beginning on the 30th of September uh, next year, uh, there'll mm -hmm. be third-party apps that use only a password to access Google accounts and Google Sync will no longer be supported. So uh, what you might refer to as, um, you know, uh, less uh, secure applications, yep. uh, that will be sunsetting there. Uh, yep. And then items in the news, uh, some impact happening uh, from Google Workspace customers to kind of 365 customers around some DMARC policy handling and calendar invites there. Uh, we're seeing some reports of, of that change impacting Google uh, Workspace accounts. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, and then uh, Okta and Chrome Enterprise are delivering some context-aware access controls to uh, establish device trust. Uh, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Jamboard is uh, you know, coming end of life. Uh, that'll be happening uh, next year. I'll talk a little bit about uh, what impact that might have for you. And then finally, uh, Chromebook Plus is Google's new certificate certification for premium Chromebooks. Uh, definitely been having some some interesting issues there. I know, Jesse, you had, uh, your order had some issues with recently purchased devices that didn't have uh, licenses attached to them. I had the same thing happening yep. with some Acer devices. You had some Lenovo ones. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, something being missed with uh, those Chrome Enterprise devices and licenses not being linked to them. Yeah, uh, weird. Across multiple, uh, yeah, multiple uh, manufacturers and OEMs and distributors there. So, all right, uh, let's dive into the details of those updates. Uh, so, first one is the improved paste values experience in Google Sheets. Uh, so previously there, when pasting uh, a number in sheets using kind of the space, uh, paste special values only, uh, the content pasted was only the text from the original range of cells. Uh, so uh, some improvements to this feature, so the default paste values for numbers will include values and the number format. So that means that all your numbers will retain their formatting as you are working in sheets. So I don't know, I never really uh, noticed too much of an issue with that, but 
uh, I guess the one example I gave here is like a date uh, value. It would, uh, you know, it, it would paste in the date serial number uh, instead of the, the actual date format. So I don't know. I guess in some cases you want the format to, to, to come through. I guess uh, other times maybe mm -hmm. not. But yeah, I would think that in most cases um, you would want the, want the format to match. I do know that there are some uh, edge cases, edge case, edge use cases that are still out there that uh, come across where it's like this is where uh, either pasting in content or uploading and converting a spreadsheet from uh, Excel format does not carry over some very sophisticated calculations and formulas and things like that. And um, honestly, this has been a gripe about uh, Excel for years is you paste something in as uh, you know a date and obviously it's a formula or you paste in something that's obviously not a date and then excel goes oh i'm going to convert this to a date and it's like no just just stop it yeah <laughs> so always yeah. appreciative always good to see updates when uh, it's able to maintain and improve this process yeah. uh, next we have the, the different certificates for signing and encrypting messages in gmail so if your org uses some different certificates for signing and encrypting messages uh, you can now use uh, the Gmail CSE API to upload different encryption and signature uh, public certificates for each user. Uh, so that is rolling out now to rep release domains and will uh, make its way over to the scheduled release domain starting the, uh, the 9th of October. Uh, that'll only be available to Enterprise Plus, Education Plus, and Education Standard customers. Uh, and next, uh, there is the ability to allow certificate mismatches for client-side encrypted messages. So certain cases where email addresses associated with a user certificate might be different from the primary email address, uh, which is kind of referred to as certificate mismatch. Uh, so admins can now opt to allow certificate mismatches, which means that their end users will be able to decrypt and read messages with that mismatch. Uh, and there's some you know recommendations here that uh, and you should only kind of allow this uh, when absolutely required for the organization. Uh, that one is uh, has hit rapid release domains already, and then it will be uh, over to the scheduled release domains also starting on the 9th of October uh, for those Enterprise Plus, Education Plus, and Education Standard customers. Uh, moving into our main uh, updates uh, for the week. Uh, first one was the ability to uh, create, modify, and insert email messages within group messages. So uh, this is something that you would uh, you know, be familiar with in the Gmail interface if you were sending your message from there uh, you know, on behalf of the group. But uh, this is now bringing that functionality directly into the group's interface. So being able to uh, leverage those templates uh, within the group's interface, uh, definitely an improvement there, especially in those situations where you know, you're kind of using those groups within a kind of collaborative uh, you know, work environment with others you can start to have those uh, templates available uh, for anyone sending messages on behalf of the group. Um, so that is uh, rolling out now to to all uh, rep release and schedule release domains. Uh, of course, that'll be available to all workspace customers as well as those with personal Google accounts. So. It's going to be hitting the uh, consumer groups interface there as well for anyone at googlegroups.com if you have one of those accounts and addresses there. Uh, next, uh, some additional uh, space manager capabilities coming to Google Chat. Interesting way that they implemented this, you know, in terms of uh, putting it uh, kind of there in the group interface and kind of in enabling it through some uh, different kind of slash commands or add mentions. Uh, types of ways there. So there'll be uh, ways to um, kind of, uh, to, uh, let's see here, um, there'll be a dialog box, dialog notification that explains why a specific user or app cannot be added to a space there. Um, that's kind of an additional little update. Uh, there'll be a new full screen view on the web that shows space managers, um, all installed apps and webhooks within a space as well. And, um, you know, kind of, just looking at some things, I think some of the screenshots here. Um, yeah, I'll just bring bring some of those uh, kind of new features and permissions and settings within the, the group interface. So that should be uh, you know kind of a welcomed change to uh, enhancements to chat. Uh, that is starting 26th of September for both rapid release and scheduled release domains. Uh, gradual, gradual 15-day rollout uh, there. 
Great size uh, screenshots there, but also wanted to say the settings pane here is starting to look a lot more like a Google Group setting pane, the amount of different settings yeah. and options and option types here. True. Yeah, I'm keeping that kind of consistent look and feel. It's nice. Yep. And building out the feature set. Yep. All right, let's see. I think I skipped over. Ah, here we go. Uh, next update is the ability to easily link to specific messages in Google Chat. So uh, being able to send someone over to a, you know, previous messages, a previous message in a chat more easily uh, that, you know, before you probably were maybe copying and pasting a screenshot of where that message was or having to look at uh, when that uh, message uh, was sent to kind of scroll back in time. Uh, so this is definitely making it uh, easier to uh, you know, refer back to a message that, uh, you know, had happened in the past. So right clicking on that message and uh, the three dots going to copy link is how you will get, uh, get to that functionality. This has and, been a long time yeah. coming. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, kind of bringing some of that, uh, you know, familiar uh, functionality that we would typically see in Slack and, and other messaging apps uh, yep. now available here in, uh, in chat. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we saw them announce, you know, 40 or so updates when we were at next, uh, regarding chat. And, uh, you know, a lot of those, uh, are, uh, you know, some really useful uh, updates that we will be seeing coming to chat. So welcome, uh, really good to see, see these, uh, finally coming out and, and releasing. Indeed. Yeah, chat is really uh, seems to be accelerated the development around growing into the whatever the next generation yeah. is going to be is is this. But I'm still waiting to see a lot of these things. I just got the new design for inline threading on one of my domains, but not on the others. And uh, yeah, the new design again for the UI on the left hand panel. I haven't seen it anywhere yet. Have you? Uh, I no the left hand panel one. No, that I have not seen yet. But some of the obviously the redesign to the spaces and messages itself, that part right. I have. Yes. Uh, this one will start rolling out to rep release domains during the 27th of September, uh, gradual rollout there up to 15 days for visibility. Uh, I've not seen that one yet, but I guess there's still a few more days within that 15 day window, uh, schedule release domains starting a little bit later, uh, next week on the 11th of October, also on a 15 day gradual rollout for that one and available to all workspace and personal uh, Google accounts. Uh, more chat updates here, uh, being able to easily add and remove groups of members to a space in Google Chat. Um, so you know, there's a new app for Google Chat called the Bulk Member Manager uh, that's going to enable space managers and space members uh, permissions to manage those members to more easily add and remove members uh, to and from a space in bulk. So yeah, this is uh, kind of a, an, oh, this was the one. So I think I was talking about some slash commands to add this uh, in the last update, but this is kind of where that's coming from. So slash add dialogue, add CSV. Uh, this is where you'll start to get uh, access to those uh, those features here. Uh, so I kind of got that mixed up, but uh, you'll be able to see the this, the bulk member manager by uh, enabling that. So I think there's, what else is there? There's uh, like add user, add question, add agent. It looks like there's a few different uh, interesting little. Um, oh, these are I think these are different other kind of. You know, I'm looking at the screenshot. Do you see the uh, screenshot? Other showing there? other apps here. Yeah, yeah. Sorting I'm ads, looking at sorting like bot. P1 sorting bot. I think those are uh -huh. some other tools that Google Workspace uses. Workspace right? wizard. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. Peek behind the curtain so, once again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what, uh, that's what you get there. So just the bulk member manager features, which is the slash add CSV and slash add dialogue uh, being available uh, to Google customers. Um, but that is also, it uh, looks like they're tying in that ability to add up to 50,000 members to spaces in Google chat. Uh, and that will help uh, a lot uh, for that transition from currents over into spaces. I think, I thought, wasn't it even more than that though? I thought it was going to be more than 50,000, but um, know, well, honestly, the number like, keeps going up and up and up. Uh, I thought it was 500,000 too when we were at uh, Google Next, right. but yeah. I can check the notes. That's what I thought too. So maybe they're going to be scaling it up again at some point. But yeah, because I thought, I remember making a comment about 
the you know some of the current uh, groups that were a couple hundred thousand users that weren't going to be able to move, be moved over to spaces because of that limit. So maybe they'll be uh, increasing this further in the future. Uh, but or maybe someone got a zero wrong <laughs> in that uh, in that slide. We're right next. Uh, but um, but yeah. So let me see here. That is. Um, I guess they posted that uh, inside of this update as well as included uh, kind of an additional uh, update a while back. Yeah, I think that's that's what it was. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm reading. I'm just trying to get the dates and timing along here. The link that they have within this article about the increase to fifty thousand was back on July 18th, right? So that was before next. So more than likely. Yes, they, I think they just haven't mentioned the 500,000 user update yet. That is what we saw at Next, wasn't it? So I guess the yeah, other incrementally going up. That's I what believe so. Here, so. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, so the 8,000 went to 50,000, and then we should be seeing an additional increase to 500,000 soon. So that is um, just interesting that they mentioned that in there in this in this update. When they're going to increase it to 500,000 soon enough. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to find at, the slide from Google Next where it had the yeah, roadmap date I, on it. Yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure I took a, a photo of that when we were there as well. Same. I'm trying to think what was the, what were the dates there. That was what was next happening. That was what, uh, early August, right? End of August. August 29th, yeah. 29.30. Yeah, let's see here. Let's see All right, you can continue here. on. I'll find the slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think I, I think I got it. Yeah, 500,000 members. Here we go. Space with 500,000 members. Uh, Q4 2023 alpha release. See? So the alpha will be coming <laughs> Q4 2023. So that just hit. Right That's now. just alpha, though. So they're not even yeah. talking about it yet. Yeah. Correct. All right, so this uh, functionality here says available to uh, all workspace customers now. And uh, next update that we will see uh, that we're going through here is the, um, the next phase of digital whiteboarding with Google Workspace. So talking about the sunsetting of Jamboard and those uh, devices. Uh, so that will be winding down in September of uh, 2024 next year. They will still be functional from like a, you know, a additional uh, screen type of a device, uh, but kind of unfortunate to see that they're really not going to uh, kind of allow the, the use of those with kind of the new uh, FigJam, Lucid, uh, Spark, and, and Miro uh, functionality that you're seeing on the Avacore devices. So that is what's happening though uh, with that. and. I think you know, people are trying to figure out well, how we're going to start to use uh, these devices moving forward. I think for some education customers, there was talks about getting some credits and refunds for uh, for those devices. And it's not really coming to the business side of things, but I did hear some education customers may be able to request some credits there for those devices. Um, but uh, yeah, things are transitioning over to those uh, Avacor series, uh, series one boards. Uh, interesting that they call it Series 1 here because that's kind of the reference that I think uh, uh, Lenovo uh, did, or one of the other Meet devices, right? It was called Series 1? I think the whole the whole series now, regardless of who yeah, makes it, called... is Series oh. 1. Okay. Or maybe that's just the Avacore one. I don't know. The whole Jamboard lineup yeah. has been confusing from the start. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, that's going to of impact a few of you there. Uh, so they'll provide a retention and migration path for Jamboard data uh, for that. I believe the timeline on having to export all Jamboard data is going to be in 2025, if I recall correctly. Uh, the uh, September 2024 data is kind of when functionality on those devices will uh, kind of cease to, 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 to work there. Uh, so have a look at this. So yeah, here we go. Here's the Jamboard device dates. Uh, 30, uh, 30th of September, 2024. 
and uh, kind of back up the data there before before that date, uh, first of October, uh, first of October, uh, twenty twenty four. Uh, the 55 inch Jamboard device will reach its auto update expiration and won't receive those security feature updates. Um, and then, yeah, if you need to kind of move to new equipment, uh, getting the Bore 65 or Dust 27 will be your options uh, for that. Uh, that's on the devices there. Uh, Jamboard apps. Uh, no, so starting the 1st of October, uh, that is when the ability to create new gems will be uh, turned off. And then between that October and December uh, dates, uh, the app will place kind of a view only mode. Uh, and you'll be able to back up those uh, jam files. And then on the 31st of December, 2024 is when they will wind down the Jamboard application and uh, won't be able to access the jam files. So I guess the yeah, start of 2025 is when you'll need to have that uh, prior to that date, you need to have things moved over and backed up. So I'm looking at some additional uh, updates here. Um, uh, one clarification yeah, here that mission. does not match the uh, the article because this came out after the fact, and I do have this in the news article area. However, I will bring it up here. Uh, under Jamboard app, it states that on the 31st of December, 2024, when they're winding down the application, yeah. the Jamboard application, you'll no longer be able to access Jam files, and Jam files, users' Jam files will be permanently deleted. Uh, this is not completely accurate anymore, thanks to uh, some others uh, in the community and champion innovators who uh, basically poked the bear and said, uh, "You want to take another look at this?" And um, it has been updated. The teams inside of Google, to their credit got to work and decided to automatically convert any remaining jams to PDF files and save them to each user's Google Drive in the same place that they were originally stored. This will not require any further input from users and helps ensure jam files are converted and not deleted. They will share more information on automatic conversion in the coming months. So if you're up in arms about getting notified that people's stuff is just going to be automatically deleted. Rest assured, that is not going to occur in the end here, um, and that's why we uh, that's why we exist. That's why the community is here. That's why um, you know we do love companies like Google that listen to us and say, "Oh, you're right. That's that we probably should do this a little bit better." And uh, to their credit, they they did. Yeah, so it's gonna be good to update this article or this uh, post here. But cause they, I think yeah, I included the support article through. in the in the um, news description here. And that's what I was just reading uh, from is the prepared repair for Jamboard wind wind down uh, um, help support article there. Yep. Uh, okay, yeah, because I think they linked to a different article in the uh, in the update, which didn't mention that. So good to see that change happening. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's get the next update here. I think we got all the dates on that squared away. Uh, next update we here have here is uh, updates regarding the transition from spaces organized by topic to inline threading. Uh, so looking here, uh, September thirtieth. Let me starting uh, to take the next step forward here towards that. Unfortunate single streamlined flow of conversations in Google Chat. <laughs> um, uh, but so as we uh, kind of go through here, just trying to look at what's important, but uh, the dates on here, kind of looks like we've been, uh, I think they're just making some announcements on dates that we've already seen. Uh, so the beginning of September, that was when the upgrading conversations will start to happen. That expected completion is gonna be March, 2024. There's a form that you can fill out to specify a specific month and whether you prefer the upgrade to take place on the weekday or weekend. So be sure to fill that one out to kind of coordinate the timing of when you want that transition to happen for your org. You get uh, a few different options there in the form. Uh, you'll be able to kind of choose uh, some month uh, between October of 2023 up to March 24. Uh, when that will be finalized. Uh, so it's kind of a, a kind of a best effort basis, of course, but uh, make sure you get those uh, in by the 15th of, uh, of October and when that preference is, uh, is preferred by you. 
so yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of updates here on when or kind of what's going to happen during the upgrade. So keep an eye on this article and I'll look at it a little closely on how that's going to, to change and what your spaces will look like. A lot of details to kind of get through in, uh, in what that is going to be. So uh, take a close look at the details of, of this, uh, this update. A lot of good screenshots on uh, what that is going to look like. So make sure, again, main thing on this timing wise is get this in by the 15th of October so that you can uh, coordinate that change for your organization and, uh, and then look at that article to get a better understanding of what those changes are going to be. Yep. Uh, next, yeah. And so uh, next a joke that's okay. been going around the community is Lord Vader says, uh, I am upgrading your spaces. Pray I don't upgrade them any further. <laughs> that was a meme made yeah. by a community member, so I wanted to give that a shout out. But hey, we're getting resizable threads panels, so, you know, all good yeah. things. Uh, next is next update we have we have here client side encryption in Gmail available on mobile devices. Uh, pretty uh, straightforward there in terms of what that is uh, for those enterprise plus customers, education plus customers, and education standard customers. Uh, your mobile users will be able to to send those encrypted messages uh, to uh, to other recipients. Uh, that's available now to both rapid release and scheduled release domains for those of you that have that enabled on those SKUs. Uh, and then finally, I think this is the last one here that we have, uh, update-wise. Uh, the uh, 30th of September, 2024, those less secure applications are uh, going to be completely uh, sunset and no longer supported. I think this is a, you know, generally a kind of a good update here. Uh, there's, um, it's been underway for a while. Yeah, it has been. And I'm sure there's still going to be some applications out there that just kind of haven't uh, moved to the kind of more secure way to log in and uh, kind of ensure that user authentication is happening with with all the different kind of security uh, controls that may be in place with like second factor and two step verification uh, type of uh, you know sign on uh, controls there. Uh, so some some dates here uh, to be mindful of. Uh, so this you know kind of was announced quite a long time ago, 2019, uh, back in. It's like, you know, was this December? Yeah, December 2019. So it's been a long time coming. And updated uh, timeline on this is that beginning the 15th of June 2024. So uh, the uh, less secure app settings will be removed from the admin console and can no longer be changed. So that uh, will mean that enabled users uh, can connect during this time, but disabled users will no longer be able to access less secure apps. And uh, that includes all third-party apps that require password-only access to Gmail calendar, contacts, and other protocols like CalDAV, uh, CardDAV, IMAP, SMTP, and POP. Uh, also, at that time, IMAP uh, enable disable settings will be removed from the user's Gmail settings. And if you've been using uh, less secure apps prior to that date, you can continue using them until the 30th of September, 2024. So between 15th of June and September, it's kind of that window of... Uh, of no longer being uh, able to add any more less secure apps. And then finally, you know, on that 30th of September date, uh, that is when less secure apps will be turned off for all Google Workspace accounts. And that CalDev, CardDev, IMAP, POP, and Google Sync will no longer work when signing in with just a password. And you'll start to need to use that login with a more secure type of access called OAuth. Uh, and then uh, also that a uh, part of that change, uh, Google Sync will be sunset, sudden setted. Uh, similar dates uh, where the 15th of June, things will start to begin there where new users will not be able to connect to Google Workspace via Google Sync. And then also on the 30th of September, that is when those Google Sync users will not be able to connect to Google Workspace. And some uh, article linked in here about how you can transition your org off of Google Sync and uh, what you'll need to do for that. Uh, some information here for admins on how to kind of prepare for that switch, what you may need to do. Uh, some information on MDM uh, and what uh, kind of impacts you'll, you'll be able to, to, to have across those different uh, protocols to, uh, to have users connect into the environment. Also some information here about end users and access to, you know, uh, through older, you know, Outlook, uh, Thunderbird clients, uh, things like that. Uh, different calendar contact application uh, details, uh, as well as uh, kind of other applications. Uh, and also there's some links here for developers on how to 
uh, make some updates uh, for those applications and be able to transition over to that more secure OAuth uh, connection. And this is going to uh, impact all workspace customers. I'm sure there's going to be some impact for, uh, I don't know if there's any less secure app up, uh, ways you could connect in, in Gmail, but probably not. I thought there was maybe. There, there, there were. There was, it used right? to be how yeah. you would connect to Outlook yeah, uh, through right. IMAP, uh, POP, yeah, et cetera, but consumer, that's but been sunsetted. That's it, okay. I believe it's been sunset. Yeah. Do you want to uh, take the DMARC update since you brought it in? Um, yeah, I can kind of quickly talk quick. about that. Yeah, really just, uh, you know, 365 environments are, are handling uh, DMARC policies in a lot of different ways. Uh, so uh, there's been some impact to workspace emails, uh, you know, with, with calendar being, uh, calendar invites being rejected. You may be seeing like a remote server returned, uh, you know, 505.50 error there and um, some kind of, uh, you know, message about access denied, sending domain, you know, Google does not have, uh, does not pass DMARC verification as a DMARC policy of reject. Uh, so there's, uh, we'll, we'll send some, we'll link to some articles about how to ensure that using the correct uh, DMARC policies and also signing your messages with the correct DKIM key also and making sure those are all matched. Uh, you know, quite an extensive amount of information uh, that you'll probably have to read through and get an understanding of there. And we're a little time crunched here to try to wrap up today's episode with things. So I won't get into too much more detail, but we will link to those uh, those articles so you can read more about that and understand what you may need to adjust in your environment uh, to comply and get those messages over to any 365 environments. Um, yeah. Cool. Just uh, two updates left now, given that we talked about uh, Jamboard and Spaces uh, in the actual Jamboard and Spaces update date section of the show here. Um, Okta and Chrome Enterprise have worked together to deliver context-aware access control to establish device trust. Sorry, I have my notes behind the camera there. I had to move around to, uh, to see what they are here. Uh, essentially, the continuing in um, the zero trust security model, last year, Google launched the Chrome Enterprise Connectors Framework. And uh, this is uh, one of the first, if not the first, integration with it. Uh, essentially, what they're doing is they're enabling enhanced security through a wide range of device signals. So you're looking at context-aware access, so device insurance policies uh, that enable IT admins to block or deny access to applications. You can have strong access policies with minimal setup on top of those configured through a UAM, which is a unified endpoint management. Uh, you can have compliance with internal device standards and security requirements and robust zero trust principles that balances security and user experience. This is a big step forward in terms of uh, working together with Chrome managed browsers. Uh, if you are an Okta user, definitely take a look at this. This is going to be a, a really, really big step forward for security and using their context aware capabilities. I believe Okta um, has, uh, what do they call it? I've been recently learning Okta, so I believe it's adaptive as is so. Already uses some uh, context aware capabilities, so I'm curious to see how this is going to play into all of that. And I will be diving uh, deeper into that because one of my clients is interested in using this, uh, as well as uh, it seems like a really, really solid update here so excited to learn more about that there's a video in the notes as well as a whole blog post on google cloud blog so you can get all of the juicy details over there now this next one and the last one is chromebook plus this is something that we've talked about um in the past i don't know six months that it's been rumored it's you know kind of like google when they release uh uh what do you call it uh, consumer devices like the pixel event that i believe was today uh they leak like crazy leading up to it chromebook plus has been touted as the new certification for higher end enterprise level chromebooks with really good specs and so we were talking talking about, hey, with the HP Dragonfly Elite and Pro Chromebooks that I currently have, would those fit into this already? You know, earlier devices, would those qualify for this program because it's gonna be this lofty new certification? Well, certification is out, and quite honestly, I'm a little bit shocked at how low the specs are for this. The minimum certifications here is an Intel Core i3, uh, or higher, and an AMD, or rather AMD Ryzen 7000 CPU, an IPS panel screen, that is, with at least 1080p, a 1080p webcam, well, thank God for that, 8 gig of RAM and 128 gig of storage. That's not okay. uh, it, very, I mean, granted, it will run well. An i3 and 8 gig yeah. of RAM will run well. Don't get me wrong there. It just won't run at a you know higher level that I really thought the Chromebook Plus branding was going to be going for, and all of the leaks that we heard leading up into it. Go ahead, Steve. You said you had something to say. 
No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just kind of listening to what you're saying, and I, I kind of agree here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, you know, what, what, I'm curious, like, what kind of specs would you probably have hoped for? I mean, at least what i5 something. Yeah, i5 and, gig, and, you know? and 16 gig minimum for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, eight gig is is simply not enough for computers anymore, even on Chrome. It will run well if it's a device yeah. used in education, for example, or devices used in yeah. uh, as you know a, a secondary device, or even for uh, you know general uh, knowledge workers that are domain specific. They're working in one application or two applications all the time, and that's it. It is a great device for that yeah. the i3s i do have deployed at a bunch of locations for signage and for business center devices and things like that but for real hardcore work for executive level work i'm not deploying an i3 anymore it's just it's right. it just yeah. granted it does run really well but just not at the level that i would expect for a right. uh, a executive yeah, level or management level device like status right yeah. exactly um you know the uh yeah, I think I'm looking at the one, like the CX-9 that I ended up getting. That was the one that I had the license issue with, too. Yeah, um, but that's what? You know, an i7 it. and 16 gig RAM? Exactly. i7, mm -hmm. 16 gig, 512 gig SSD. Like, the storage is kind of, yeah, like, whatever. The I mean, storage, whatever. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, unless you're deploying a lot of, like, Android apps, that's really where the storage probably comes, you know, right. in, into play more okay, often. Okay, so Chromebook, don't you know. install Asphalt 8 and 9 on your devices, and you should be good. Not, yeah. <laughs> Those are, yeah. like, 1.8 gig downloads, I think, and then they download another 300 meg every time you yeah. open the app or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, mean, I thought, I mean, that uh, CX-9, you know, that the pricing it was relatively reasonable, I think. For yeah, the, for no, 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 specs, five, 700 dollars. That was, well, that was 1,200, I think, for that one. Okay, fine. Seven hundred dollars should get you i5, oh, yeah. i5 sixteen gig of right, RAM, DC yeah, exactly. screen, ten eighty p webcam. Yep. Like that's what I was looking for. I was looking for yep. a a base point that was a real solid business class device base point. I don't I I don't think i three is where it's at, especially not with eight gig of RAM. I three yeah. and sixteen, maybe we could have talked about it, but I don't. I I personally, in my experience working on Chromebooks for yeah. the level that I want to see them at, no, I don't. I don't think it's it's quite there. Um, yeah. One of the yeah, other especially... interesting things that that The Verge put in here, I just wanted to call out, is they didn't mention battery life. However, they did ask Google mm -hmm. spokesperson Peter Dew about this, and he provided the following statement, quote, all Chromebooks are required to meet a 10 hours battery life requirement based on internal testing st standards. While not a new requirement for Chromebook Plus, like the 1080p screen or 8 gig of RAM, Chromebook Plus laptops must also adhere to this. Yeah, um, yeah so. I was going to mention, like, the... You know, the situation with the CPU really is impactful when you have, you know, a bunch of tabs open and you're trying to then also be in a meeting. That's yep. where you see, I think, the most impact on that CPU is uh, is in those situations. Otherwise, yep. yeah, like you said, it should relatively run well, but um, that's kind of where you see some impact is when you're running meetings and trying exactly. to do a lot of stuff and have tabs. But, you know, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully with some of the Chrome, like, memory or, you know, like of optimization uh, that they've come out with would have Hopefully. some impact there, but right. it also and also I mean the Chrome browser itself uh, and and how it runs on a Chrome on Chrome OS are slightly different. I think we talked about this oh, too when we had certainly. you know uh, I think and a few other people on talking about how that it kind of is fundamentally different in the way it kind of operates with, with that integration with the CPU and the kind of the hardware you know just kind of like just like exactly like what. You know, Mac OS devices, uh, yep. they function too. Like they're better, Deep level tight, integration gets yeah. better performance on the go. Last yeah. thing I wanted to include here is a couple of new devices that are going to be announced. Uh, two, or actually three from Lenovo, IdeaPad Slim, Flex 5i, and uh, Gaming Chromebook Plus 16, as well as the classic HP Chromebook Plus X360 14, and also a Chromebook Plus 15.6. And then Acer has a Chromebook Plus 15, uh, sorry, 515 and 514. Um, so keep in an eye out for those coming in um, the next couple of weeks, I suppose. Keep an eye out for uh, updates and reviews on those. All right. Gotta run. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sticking with us every single week. It's all for Workspace Recap. Have a great week. We have some new things coming, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and to the podcast. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Workspace Recap.